In this video, we'll be talking about loops and their structure. By using loops in our computer programs, we'll be able to have the program perform a certain task or calculation over and over, while we've only typed the code for the commands once. In this course, we'll mostly use while loops, which will execute commands until a certain condition is met. Let's try making a simple loop that counts from 1 to 10 and prints each of these values. I'll begin by initializing the variable n by setting it equal to my starting value, n equals 1. To begin the loop calculation, I first need to decide what my condition for the loop will be. Since we only want to count to 10, I'll just type while n less than 10. This should run the loop as long as the value for the variable n is less than 10. Make sure you end this line with a colon. When I press return after the colon, I see that the cursor is automatically indented over one tab space. This is done so that I can easily see what lines of code are inside of my loop. Any line that follows the while statement and is tabbed over will be performed over and over until the conditional statement is no longer true. Inside of our loop, I'll type a print statement so that we can display the value of the variable n as it changes. In order to make the loop count up, we'll need to change the value of the variable n. To do this, we'll type n equals n plus 1. This statement doesn't seem to make much sense algebraically, but in computer programming, statements like these are often used. Think of this line as a reassignment of the variable n. On the left of the equal sign, we have the new variable, and we're now assigning it to be the value of the old variable plus the desired change. Finally, I'll now return to the left margin and type print end of program outside of the loop. Here's our completed loop. Think about what you expect to see when we run the program. Let's run the loop and see what we get. So we see a printout of our list of numbers and then the phrase end of program. Note that the last phrase was only printed once since it is outside of the loop. Our list of numbers, however, only contain the values 1 through 9, so the loop didn't exactly perform as we expected, did it? Why didn't it print the last value of 10? Looking at our list of numbers, we see that the last printed value is when n was equal to 9. Going back to the loop, we see that we print the number 9 and then add 1 to it. Now the value for n is 10. The program then goes back to the conditional statement and correctly determines that 10 is not less than 10, so it stops executing lines of code in the loop. Hence, our last value of 10 is never printed. So how can we fix this? Since we know that the loop stopped because the value of n was equal to and not less than 10, we'll change the conditional statement to be less than or equal to 10. This will allow the loop to run one more time and print that last value of n equals 10. This is one of several ways to solve this problem. Can you think of any others? In this video, we've introduced the structure of while loops and worked through a simple example. In our example here, we only performed one operation on our variable, but it doesn't have to stop there. Throughout this course, we'll be performing all sorts of operations inside of while loops. See if you can use a while loop to produce this sequence of numbers.